Hi, this is part three of the asthma and COPD trigger series. The first one that we went over was smoke. So everybody knows smoke is kind of a no-brainer. It's not good for your lungs. You want to stay away from it. Um, so the other videos, we're going to be getting into um, some other things that you might not think about. So today I'm going to talk about weather and air pollution. Now, not everybody is the same when it comes to what affects their lungs. So this is really important. If you do not know what your triggers are, then you need to try to figure that out. Now, the easiest way to do that is to keep a diary. Just write down what you do, um, what you eat, what different things you're around, and then rate your breathing. This way, if you notice that your breathing starts to get a little bit worse, you can actually kind of look back in your notes and say, what was I around yesterday or the day before yesterday that could have caused me to have this reaction? So it's important to figure it out. Now, when it comes to weather, I have people in rehab that are on both ends here. So I have people that cannot tolerate cold weather, and then I have people that cannot tolerate hot weather. And usually they can tolerate the opposite. So um, if you happen to be someone who does not tolerate cold weather, I recommend always wearing, having a scarf handy. You can wrap it around, you're breathing that in. If you put it over your nose and your mouth, you're gonna breathe that in and it's gonna warm the air. So you're gonna have that, um, if you use your nose, you'll have that natural humidifier and heater there as well. So in through your nose, if you react to cold weather, super important in through your nose out through your mouth and if you do have something to cover your mouth up you want to do that um, high humidity also can cause breathing problems because it can cause inflammation and it could cause bronchospasm the tightening so um, anytime that it's high humidity out the best thing to do really if you can avoid it is stay in when it's super humid and do your errands either earlier in the morning or in the evening when it's a little bit better. So um, a good thing to do would just be to monitor the weather. So um, if you know that you're someone who reacts to certain things, just watch the weather channel. That way you kind of have an idea of what's gonna happen and you can plan your day around that. Now, while you're monitoring the weather, if you're looking at the weather channel, another good thing to monitor is the um, ozone level. So this can this will be on the weather channel. You can look it up on your phone, <laughs> um, but high ozone alert days are worse for your lungs. So they've pretty much, you know, they, they tell you if you have trouble breathing, you need to stay in on these high, high ozone alert days. If you cannot stay in during those days, then you want to use your bronchodilator, your um, rescue medication, about 15 minutes before you have to go out. And that's gonna help you a little bit, just kind of fight defensively before you even go out there. Um, so I've thrown a lot at you here when it comes to the weather. Um, basically, you just need to find out which which is good, which is bad for you. That way you can just kind of plan around it a little bit better um, because there's nothing you can do about the weather, unfortunately. Um, so it just, ha you know, you just pretty much have to um, make the necessary changes in order to get what you need to do done as well as try to um, help your lungs a little bit so that you feel better. Um, so if you have any questions, just drop them down in the comment section and um, I will be back with the next part tomorrow.